Hello, I'm Albert Lawrence and you are watching TV in Color. This is the place where you can come to find out about all the multicultural talent that's working within television. And so on this episode, we have someone very special with us who is a writer on one of the hottest shows on television. The show is Scandal. It airs on ABC. And the writer is Ramla Muhammad. Ramla Muhammad, thank you so much for having us within your home tonight. Oh, absolutely. So glad to be here. First, before we jump into the show, we've got to talk about what it is that we have going on behind <laughs> us. So as we said, this is your home and you've got your crazy media collection here. What inspires you to collect? Well, I've always been a fan of books and TV and movies. I'm an only child, so that means that you have to entertain yourself a lot. <laughs> so my mom pretty much just put me in front of the television, and uh, she was a single mom, and went to work, and um, I just kind of became a fan of TV and storytelling. So then how did you decide then that TV was the kind of storytelling that you would excel at? Well, I went to USC for grad school for TV and film, and uh, at USC I actually was more into doing features and film. Uh, and when I went to USC, it was kind of the beginning of, I think, what they call the third golden age of television, like when Sopranos and Wire. So TV was just really exciting. And I realized at some point that I have loved TV for so long. And of course, you know, it's, you think to yourself, oh, okay, I'll just get a job in television. <laughs> that'll be, that'll be very easy. Sure. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> yes, no, it doesn't, it doesn't exactly happen like that. So I just, I just kind of did what, you know, some people do is, or a lot of people do, is I got an assistant job in television uh, on Grey's Anatomy. Uh, so that was kind of my entryway into learning uh, about television production and, you know, television writing. Okay, so Grey's Anatomy there, immediately we're thinking, all right, so there's a link from Grey's Anatomy to Scandal because of right. Shonda Rhimes. Right. right. Okay, so how did that transition then work from being on Grey's? Well, I started off as a writer's PA on Grey's Anatomy, which means you get lunch and coffee, mm. um, and you sweat a lot. Absolutely <laughs> um, necessary. Getting that lunch, though. yeah, lunch and coffee. <laughs> um, but it's it it was kind of amazing because I realized that there was this job where you sit around um, with other great, awesome, friendly people. And you talk about stories, and you talk about TV, and you eat food, and it, it just was like everything I love to do, all uh, all in one in one room. And I was like, and they pay you to do this. It's amazing. Go figure. <laughs> um, so I basically worked as hard as I could, um, you know, trying to just see what opportunities I could get, um, just being an assistant. And I got lucky. One of the writers on the show, Jenna Bands, had a pilot that got picked up uh, for Off the Map. And uh, she asked me to be her assistant. Then I watched kind of that whole development process happen from, uh, from getting a pilot script, uh, network notes, staffing, all the way to the show getting picked up on the air. And uh, it was a great learning experience. So I worked on Off the Map um, as a medical researcher. And then after that, Scandal got picked up as a pilot. So I went on to be the researcher on that first season. And then applied to the ABC Disney program. And it was kind of a, around, you know, we only had we only had seven episodes the first season, so it wasn't clear, you know, what would happen with the show. So, um, luckily, we had a second season, mm -hmm. and um, I came back as a writer in the second season. Wow, you put it so succinctly and beautiful <laughs> yes. for us. It, within it, the... <laughs> it, a lot of it, a lot of it, actually was just luck, to be honest. Just the fact that Shonda is so brilliant and just a powerful, wonderful person. And she believes in promoting her assistance and promoting from within um, people who work hard. So, um, and she has, you know, all these shows that you could kind of move around and, and work on. So, um, so a lot of it was just luck and opportunities. But um, I definitely tried to write and, you know, make sure that I was learning a lot from the people who were around me who were just these brilliant, amazing people. Which then takes us to the researcher position that you mentioned. What does that title actually entail when you're talking about a show that is so complex, but then also rooted within some truths within Washington, D.C.? What right. was the researcher did? Well, the, the first season of the show, um, you know, I looked up a bunch of political scandals. Yeah. Like I said, I, I watched a lot of television as a kid, but that also included the news. My mom was a big news junkie, so we'd watch these trials, like the Clarence Thomas, oh, Anita Hill scandal. <laughs> um, probably when I shouldn't have been watching, I was kind of young, but, um, but it was fun to be able to, you know, do research, talk to 
consultants call public affairs office and get people to, you know, kind of share their stories or different scandals. So Judy Smith, she's obviously the real life Olivia Pope. So she was a great resource for us in order to kind of hear her stories and hear what she's been experiencing. Um, so I worked with her a lot first season. Wow. It's, it's just so intriguing because when you think, when we think about somebody who's actually calling up these people, calling up these folks that are within Washington and trying to get some real dirt, did you come up against any sort of opposition? Was it tough at all? Did you have to charm any people on the other line? Yeah, you know, somewhat. I mean, I think uh, I think people sometimes are a little hesitant to share or tell their stories. But mostly, um, I will say, you know, we did have Judy who was able to um, give us some, some insight without, you know, specifics, <laughs> breaking <laughs> client confidentiality. But to help us, you know, kind of get ideas as far as kind of different stories we could tell. Uh, one episode we did, which... I thought turned out really well was we did a plane crash episode, uh, kind of the behind the scenes of kind of the PR and the optics of what happens when a plane crashes from the side of the pilots union and the, the um, airline. And so that was fun research to do because, you know, I read a lot of NTSB reports and the writer Mark Wilding, who's actually a showrunner uh, for Scandal, it was his episode. So he had read some books on plane crashes and then we found a consultant and it just, the story kind of all came together in a, in a great way. Um, and also was still emotional, so. Wow. So that's like kind of the researcher's, you know, ultimate goal is to not only just provide the facts, but also inspire the writers to tell a good story, so. And in this age of social media and, and the digital sphere in the universe, people will call you out if you yes. play some slumber. <laughs> yes, that is true, that is true. <laughs> so then let's move to you as a writer then. Uh, between bec being a researcher and becoming a writer, what were some of the skills that you picked up along the way that helped you to climb on up to that status? Um, well, I think it's it's still a learning process, you know. Um, I'm I'm a story editor now. You know, I'm just amazed constantly by, you know, the upper-level writers and not just their ideas, but it's also about your ability to pitch those ideas and to, um, you know, get the rest of the room to kind of see what's in your head, you know, because a lot of times as writers we're so in our head and then in our head it's, you know, okay, this is going to be great, and then what comes out is kind of like, Bleh. <laughs> so I still feel like I'm still learning and trying to craft things. But I think I think a lot of the fear initially that I had fear to speak or fear to that I was going to be judged or whatever. I think I think that's kind of gone away, which kind of frees your mind to think actually more about story and pitches, uh, because that sometimes that fear can be paralyzing. But it's, it's still there. It's still, it's still there. there. It's still there. <laughs> There's more to come. Stay with us.